Hello and welcome back to the Airy Striker ASO2 complete upgrade guide and you've guessed it in the second episode we're going to be doing hop, barrel and such forth where in the first episode we looked at the cylinder and the trigger system if you haven't uh, watched that video I suggest you head on over to the, uh, the channel and just click the first video to make sure you're up to date with the series so first of all what we're going to want to do you're probably going to be upgrading the hop, the barrel, or the hot rubber, or all of the above. Um, with these, it's dead simple. First, I'm just going to remove, I haven't got the body pin in, I'm just going to remove the cylinder and the magazine. And then remove this modified hop wheel as well. So, if you don't have an, a hot wheel fitted, um, if you do have a hot wheel fitted you had to have modified it like I have if you don't have a hot wheel fitted you'll have a little grub screw your 2 mil allen key just remove that all the way out and then we can get to removing the hand guard so what you will need is you'll need a 3 mil allen key and first of all we're just going to use it to loosen off the bipod lug which secures into the outer barrel That, set it to one side and then we're going to remove the countersink screw from the rear of the handguard. It's the shorter of the two, the longest one being at the back of the trigger guard. So that's one side and then what we're going to do is we're just going to, what I tend to do is put my fingers on the handguard on this side and just use my thumb to push and it'll just loosen it off the barrel and then we're just going to slide that, just give it a little wiggle up or down, left and right, it doesn't really matter, and it will slide off the front. And then with the outer barrel, all we're going to have to do is just anti-clockwise uh, uh, anti and just unthread the barrel system. Pulls it off the back there. Next what you want to do is get a large flathead screwdriver, uh, the larger the better because what you want it to do is you want it to span across the, uh, the feed tube, let me just zoom in here so you can see it. So you've got the feed tube there, you've got two little notches one on each side and what you want to do is just slot your large flathead screwdriver in and just turn it to clockwise again. If you haven't got the screw, once it's loose, if you haven't got the screwdriver in both notches, that's fine. Just make sure you're not applying too much pressure and you can still turn it out. And the feed tube removes. So now you've got that removed, you'll find that this just falls out the front here. You can set the receiver to one side. And I'll just zoom you in. And you'll see on the underside of the hot unit we've got four... Uh, screws that we need to remove. Now when we're removing these screws you'll notice that the Phillips that I was using or the crosshead screwdriver that I was using um, was slightly undersized as compared to what I would normally use um, and the reason for that is when using the size up the blades of the screwdriver tend to catch here and here uh, which tend if you are going to reuse the, the standard hop unit is you know you're going to put excessive wear on this where you don't need to you can go down, down a size that's fine just take your time with it so you don't round the screws off um, and just make sure you're not using too small a size because the last thing you want to do is destroy the screws and be unable to get your inner barrel and hop out if you are. Now, if you are going to be using um, all new parts, so if you've got an AA hop rub, uh, unit, a new hop rubber and a new barrel, you could pretty much take this out and just set it to one side. You don't really need any components out of here, but I'm just going to take it apart to show you anyway. So uh, you'll see the standard hop rubber, these wear out very, very quick. Um, Sometimes even in like a couple of rounds or a couple of hundred rounds these will tear So this is probably one of the first parts that I would recommend replacing on your striker If you're going to save up and wait to do other bits and pieces like cylinder and such so um, We've got that removed we're going to set that to one side because we're going to be installing an action army hop chamber Just go and open that now 
and for this one I'm actually going to be reusing the uh, the standard in a barrel uh, because I've got some some personal tests that I just want to find out I want to know how good these barrels are so if um, if you are using them can we lap them and such so I want to be putting the standard barrel back in because I, there's some tests that I want to run personally but this is where you put your crazy jet Prometheus barrel or whatever you're using whether it's bridged or unbridged just make sure there are two types of barrel there is bridged which you see here which has the bridge section on the back here and then there's unbridged now if you've got an unbridged barrel you can use normal bridge top rubbers that's fine they don't really tend to give you any issues or if you're using like a maple leaf rubber um, you're going to need an unbridged barrel which you can just file this off flat uh, make sure there's no burrs and you can put a normal maple leaf hot rubber on there just fine it'll work perfectly fine so that's the difference so also for this test I'm going to be using a PDI W hold just because it's a fairly simple hot rubber that I can use. Um, these tests that I'm doing have something to do with a new Lycan hot rubber. We're just doing comparison bits and pieces. So what you'll do, let's say you've got your standard barrel and your upgraded hop, or whether you've got your upgraded barrel and your upgraded hop, whatever parts you've got, first of all you're going to want to pop your hot rubber onto your barrel after making sure that the inner barrel is clean. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further. And if you're installing the AA hop chamber, this is where you'll need to pick up. So if you're not installing the AA hop chamber, you can just skip this step and just reverse the process on fitting the standard hop chamber back onto your original barrel. I'm just going to open this here. So you've got two long grub screws. You've got a nub, which is just a solid piece of rubber. We've got a small grub screw, we've got a spring, and we've got an O-ring. Now you do want to check, there's two types of this hop unit about. Uh, this is the new one, where you can see the uh, section on the front is a lot thinner, um, where the old one was a lot wider. Um, this new unit will work with any barrel. The old unit will work with standard airy striker barrels so it will work with the ASO2 standard long barrels but the upgraded uh, wave 2 barrels that they did like the spiral and the the one with the integrated flash rider on the end they're a little bit different so you will need the new unit if you're using the bespoke short outer barrel you can use either one they'll all fit so we've machined it in a way that it will fit both types of hop units so first of all what you want to do is you want to get that hop arm out of the way and we've got your hot rubber fitted to your barrel and then what helps <clears throat> with this process is I've just got a tiny bit of silicon oil and what I tend to do is I just apply a little bit of silicon oil to the outside of the hot rubber and then I spread it with my finger very carefully making sure you don't get any of this silicon oil into the inside of the hot rubber and you can wipe most of the excess away, you just want it a little greasy to make sure it pushes into here perfectly. So then we're just going to get, we're going to line the fin upwards and we're going to slide this into the hot rubber. And you see how easily that went in and that's because we did that step and the inside of the hot rubber is still dry so there's no drama. Just make sure you don't get any kind of silicon or any kind of lubricant on the inside of the hot rubber. So now you've got your barrel and your hop slid into your hop unit. What you can do is just get this little collet here and what we're going to do is just put it on so the uh, the biggest edge is towards the end of the barrel. I'm going to slide this down and this is where usually people go wrong because what they do is they don't line these holes up properly and then they can't get the long grub screws in where they need to go. So what you want to do is you've got a hole on opposite ends of this uh, section here so what you want to do is put it in with the holes to the sides of the hop unit so the bottom hole to the hop unit you don't want a hole and the other two you want a hole there so you just push that up to the hot rubber is it going to go on there just going to make sure everything's seated just pop that in there again 
everything seated correctly so we're just going to push that in lining up the holes on the sides and then we're going to take the long grub screws and just put it in the sides here and you want these to go through those holes and to hold the inner barrel. Uh, I just need, I think it's a 1.5 mil Allen key. Yep, so it's 1.5. What I would usually do is make sure these holes are aligned, just make them uh, flush with the body. So I'm just holding that into place, make it flush. It shouldn't be binding, shouldn't be hitting anything, it should turn nice and freely. And then what you can do is just go side to side and just keep going until eventually they'll stop and you'll feel the resistance. Now what you don't want to do is put too much force on these grip screws because especially with brass barrels uh, and weaker, weaker material barrels you can actually push the barrel inwards and create a pinch and then your, your rounds are just going to get blocked in the barrel. So I just say don't, I wouldn't uh, recommend fitting the Allen key in that way because you can apply much more force. Keep it like that, keep going until you stop, just do a little bit more of a nip just to make sure it's tight and that way we're not damaging the barrel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the smaller of the grip screws and that's going to go in the bottom. And what that grip screw is going to do is going to hold the black sleeve to the hop unit, make sure that doesn't move. Once that's secured, that's done. And just for uh, instructional purposes, I'm just going to use the standard booking that comes with the kit. So that just goes in the little semicircle section on the arm. And then the easiest way I've found to do this is just to pop the spring and that in there. And then what you want to do is keep this hop arm sort of flat or level. And you actually want to pivot up the barrel and the hop rubber like so and then what that does is it stops anything falling out of place and then we're just going to hold on to that we're going to get the o-ring over the hop unit once it gets to this stage you're probably going to need something like a little allen key or a screwdriver just to push it over the step once it's over the step just hold it with your finger and we're going to roll the fingers around the hop unit just to make sure it's over, once it's over the step that's fine still holding the hop arm down so nothing comes out of place and then we're just going to push that along and that secures into the hop unit so that's your hop unit and your barrel fully assembled I'm just going to pop these bits to one side now if you are going to reuse the standard hop chamber all you would do is you've got a couple of sections to this you've got the section where the horseshoe goes you just pop that back into place where it would be obviously the hot rubber would be on the barrel you just set that in place get your cover make sure it's centered over the horseshoe and then once that's done screw it in from the bottom and then you're good to go and uh, that is fully assembled now with the standard hop units because it's like a clamshell type i highly recommend ptfe in round the hot rubber uh, and barrel and then closing it down because it can close onto the PTFE and cause a great seal. I don't recommend using PTFE with the Action Army Hop Chambers mainly because as soon as you slide it into the chamber there's such a, a low amount of space in there between the hop rubber and the chamber itself you end up just going to be pinching the PTFE and just pushing it all to the front anyway and it's going to cause you issues so if this is done and assembled correctly you shouldn't have any air loss problems. Um, in regards to the, the stoppers you just want these screws flush at the top, you don't need to uh, tighten these up at all and then we're ready to assemble this back into the rifle. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the rifle, we're going to get the feed tube section pointing down towards the magazine, I'm going to push this into the rifle and you'll see it latches onto the two lugs that are present on the sleeve. So what we're going to do, just to centre this, is we're going to get the feed tube I'm just going to put that into place but I'm not going to tighten this up yet so feed tube goes into place probably just do two turns on that and then that stops the hop unit coming out 
if you snug that feed tube um, or your hop adjustment screw down it's going to cause you issue when you go to screw your outer barrel on because it can pivot the hop unit either up or down so first what you want to do is just put those bits in loosely then go ahead and pop your outer barrel in just make sure it's something you can do this off camera need to make sure the barrel is centered in the end here which it isn't So then all I'm going to do is screw the outer barrel on. And then what that's going to do is it's going to centre the hop unit. So it's going to make sure it's uh, centred both up and down, left and right. Now when screwing this in, I have seen a few posts uh, on forums and on the Facebook page that your hop uh, unit's getting scratched. This isn't a problem at all. It's completely common in, you know, I've, I've fitted hundreds of these to these rifles. Um, it's basically just the area between the barrel and the hop just getting a little bit of friction as you're fitting them together. It's perfectly fine. It won't cause any problems at all. So once you've screwed this on as far as you need to go, what I recommend is putting the handguard on the front there and then just pushing it onto the barrel to make sure the barrel's far enough back for it to fit into that's perfect and then we can flip the rifle over and we can snug the feed tube down making sure the screwdrivers in both the notches on the feed tube there we go so that's snug and then I'm going to flip it over and fit the hop wheel I'll be doing a guide to make sure to make the AA hop wheel fit however I don't actually have any more of these to do a tutorial on how to modify it but as you can see it's very simple but if I can get my hands on another one of these I'll do a tutorial on that as well and then what we're going to do is pop the cylinder back in, which is going to be easy because we removed that lever that we no longer need. And then what I have seen some people talking about is when the uh, cylinder goes into the hop unit, you're getting some scratching on the top or the bottom. And I have seen people talking about shimming the uh, sleeve, which you can do. But I would recommend if you're going to do those kind of adjustments, you could do those kind of adjustments with the feed tube. Um, you're not going to be doing much adjustment because it's held the hop unit's held in by the barrel. But you could shim, put like a little washer on there or something else, or even take a little bit of material off the top of the feed tube. It's not going to hurt it at all. But we're just going to pop that back in. Make sure the cylinder centered first. That goes in. Cylinder goes pop down. I'm going to put our body pin back in. We'll also be doing a guide on how to modify the ED1 pin to fit the ASO2 because I found a way. I need a two mil Allen key. I'm just going to tap that into place. It's not going into place. Let's find out why. Two mil Allen key into the body pin, and now your airy striker ASO to oh, not just yet. We're going to put the screws back in first, that would help. I'm running out of time here on the memory card, so I'm going to try and be quick. That goes in bipod lug, goes in. If you do want to get rid of this bipod you could always use like an M5 screw of the right length. So now we are cylinder upgraded, we are sear adjusted and we are AA hop installed, PDI hot rubber, barrel of your choice of course and hot rubber of your choice. Cylinder back, cylinder forward and it fires. 
Thanks for tuning in, and that is how to fit your AA hop chamber and barrel and hop modifications into the ASO2. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.